Pterodactyl here, and I need to find some kind of winter project to work on. So let's look around in the junkyard and see what we can find. Nah, there's too much missing off of that. Nah, I don't want none of that junk. Huh, moped? Nah, maybe in the future. Boy, I got a lot of crap out here. Huh, there's got to be something out here I can make cool, something cool out of. Oh, you know what? I wonder if Ronnie's got anything in that shed. Hey, Ronnie, you in there? What am I knocking on the door for? I own the place. <laughs> I don't care if he's in there or not. Hey, Ronnie, you in here? Wow, got a lot of junk in here and stuff. Aha! That's what I want right here. This is it. This is what I'm looking for. Something like this. Yeah! A half a snowblower with tracks on it. I could build something cool out of this. Haha, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna take this. Oh! Whoa! What are you doing? You know you gotta pay for that, Terrell. I got a lot of money wrapped up in that thing. Guy's supposed to be coming for it today, actually. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Ronnie. For some reason, I thought this was mine. <laughs> I thought all this stuff in here was mine. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Here, let me pay you. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, I, I knew you'd see it my way, so I'm, ask I'm only asking 300 for that. Oh, is that all? Just 300? <laughs> yeah, that's no problem. I got it. Pterodactyl oh. oh. here. Today, I'm going to try to build, and I say try, to build me a snow dog. And if you don't know what a snow dog is, that's like a gas powered sled. And I'm gonna build it out of this old track snow blower. So the first thing I need to do is gut it all the way down because uh, all we want is the tracks and this housing that the tracks are on. So I'm going to pull the engine off and we're going to pull all the drive out of it and then I'm going to kind of show you, take the handles off and show you how I'm going to build it. Now I like this one because it's got these individual clutches for the tracks. So you pull these levers and you can disengage the tracks and you can kind of steer it. Now. I don't know if we're going to need them because a, a, a regular snow dog, you kind of steer it by guiding it by the, by the handlebars that you hold on to. So the idea is you stand behind this or sit behind it on a little sulky and then you drive it, the tracks pull you along on the sulky. It's like for ice fishing and trail grooming. But they usually use like an old snowmobile, guys that build them. But I thought I'd try to build one out of an old track snowblower. And of course we want it to go kind of faster than a snowblower too. So I'll kind of explain to you what I'm gonna do to it. But first we need to strip a bunch of this down. So I need to take the engine off and uh, we're gonna take the handle off because we're gonna make a new handle. It's going to be quite involved process. Take this belt guard off. Okay. So, this engine uses a shaft off the camshaft to make the drive work. And then the PTO, the regular engine shaft, is what drove the auger. We're not going to drive it that way. So I'm not going to use this engine at all because it's got this extra shaft on there. I've got another engine this size that's got a three quarter inch crankshaft on it. So we're not going to use this engine at all. And then this drive system, you know, is that kind that, that uses a rubber disc. And the rubber disc drives against this and that's what propels the tracks. So we're going to eliminate all this too. 
but I'll show you that a little closer and then explain to you how I'm going to drive it and make it go faster. So we'll get this belt off. We're not going to use that anymore. And then uh, I'll go ahead and get a socket and get underneath there and undo the engine and get the engine off. I could always use this engine for something else. Yeah, we're going to eliminate all this. This shaft that goes through the center here, I'm going to take that out and I'm going to replace it with another shaft, a different shaft. All right, this is the last bolt. Well, we're running out of battery. We'll have to do it the old fashioned way. Save this engine because it's good. Use it on something else. Alright, so next, I guess I'll take the handle off. That way we can flip the flip this around. Another thing, we don't have to use this in snow when it's done. We could use it on dirt. Disconnect this. And those cables for steering it. Which is just a Phillips head here. need them screws and then there was a little little piece that jumped out of there. Did you see where that went Mr. Cameraman? Looks like this. It's a little nut. Like me, a little nut. Um. It'll turn up. I'll put that back in there. Come on little guy. There you go. Okay, got one more bolt to take off to hold the handle on. And that one's giving me the flux too. This thing's so rusty. Or maybe I should put a new battery in the tool. Oh, that's a lot of weight right there. Alright, so we're going to save our cables, and I found that little piece that flipped out of there. So now we're down to just the track system. That's some of the engine mounting bolts in there. So now I want to take off this plate, because what would happen is, the engine's driving this thing, spinning this disc, and then when you'd squeeze the cable, that would go against here, and that's what would make it drive. And then by changing, by moving this in and out, that's what changes your speed. So when this disc is all the way to the outside, that's as fast as it'll go, which isn't very fast. So I'm going to eliminate all that. And then I'm going to just put a shaft, a straight shaft through here with a sprocket on it. 
and then we'll hook the chain back to here, this chain. Because we need that to drive. And then they'll have another sprocket on it too that's going to come off the engine when we put on it. And then when we squeeze those cables, that'll disengage each one of these tracks. So we'll, we'll pop this off next. Let me see how that comes off of there. Just some 3 8, three eight bolts it looks like over here. I had a 3-8 socket here. Alright, there's a cotter pin over here I need to take out. A welcome back cotter. That's what I call that. And then there's a spring here. Let's see. Oh yeah, there we go. And Spin this around. We don't need this anymore. That's seven sixteenths. Let me get a seven sixteenths. Okay, I got this bracket off. Now I can feed that cable through there. Get that off. But these bolts also help to hold this thing together, so I need to stick these back in there. There's the other one. Okay, so now we got this off. I need that turtle for my snowblower, don't throw that away. It'll be here for you. I'm not throwing it away. Okay. So that's what drives everything. And I noticed, look at this. This thing is all sloppy. There's bushings in here and they're all worn out. So I have to find me a set of bushings for that. But this part we're keeping. We just want to eliminate this now. And that's got that shifter on it too. All right, so it looks like we got a couple of bolts here. Half an inch on the outside. Adjustable the croissant. Chain off. Yep. 
All right. So now we got all this off. Probably gonna need a gear. This is, I'm sure this is probably some odd, yeah, this is some odd gear. It's got a hex in there. How many teeth? Two, four, six, eight, ten. All right, so we don't need this anymore. And this is the shifter, so we can eliminate this. Let's get this out of here, out of our way. And then it had this shifter here, which kind of changes the geometry on it. So it would push the snow or push the uh, auger down, down real tight, put a lot of pressure against the ground so it wouldn't come up. That's what this lever did. So we may have to lock, lock this somehow because this, this pivots off of that. This fork, what makes this move up and down off of this rod. You could probably just lock it in place somehow. But we'll worry about that later. Let me get this off. Works a lot better with a, with a new battery in it. It also works good as a hammer. And then there's a bracket under here. So we might as well take that off too. Okay. Now, let me see about replacing these bushes that are wore out. Because that has to do with our with our little wheel clutches. So how can I hold this? Alright. Need a pair of vice grip. Well, that bushing is really wore out. I get something to pry in it. Oh, there we go. Wow. That thing's all wore out. Hopefully it didn't wear the shaft out. All right, there's one on the other side. I need to take that one off too. why the drive wouldn't work on this snow thrower. Somebody junked this thing. This is a Murray snow, snow thrower. I believe. I think. We'll see when I get the when I get the bushings. The part number will tell me who made it. I think it's Murray. I could be wrong, it might be MTD. I need that screwdriver again. Come on, little bushing. Come on out. Come on out. Come out, come out, wherever you are. There you are. All right, let me go find the bushings if I got them. Okay, I found a hex bearing. And there's the part number in case you got one of these snow trollers and you're not cannibalizing it like I am. In case yours won't drive, you might want to check these bushings might be wore out because that's what makes 
those little gripper grabber things grab. So it was an MTD. And it looks like it's made out of powdered or centered metal bushing or bearing. They called it a bearing. And then I'll do the same to the other side. I got one of them snowblower sterile. But I use it for what it's intended for, snow. Tighten them back up. My little ratchet wrench. Now I need a shaft to go through here, because this is what we're going to use to drive it with. So this shaft that was on there isn't going to work because it's hex, and this has got real odd size here. It's not like a, and you know, it's not like it's five eighths or three quarter. It's some odd size with an odd size bearing. So I went and found these bearings from Stens that are going to work because they fit in here. The only difference from the old bearings is these got a ring on it to keep the bearing from going too far. But I, I'll probably use a collar. I'll use a small collar maybe on the inside to hold it. I'll figure something out. But now we need a shaft. So I got a bunch of, we need a key shaft. Aha. This, now there's no key in it. Oh, here's one. Alright. So here's an axle shaft out of a transmission. So this is hard. This is hardened steel. So this should work. Oh yeah, and the bearings fit. And it's got a keyway in it. And one end is drilled and tapped. So I just got to figure out the length and then I'll have to cut it. I'll probably let it stick out a little further so I can put a collar on there. Do I got any collars that will fit? To find me a collar. These are all too big. I got to have something. I got a bunch of junk. So I found a three-quarter bore, 10 tooth sprocket. It looks like it's got the same chain pitch. Let's see. Now, it's a little thick. I might have to change the chain. Because this looks like it's 40 or 41, but this is probably for heavier chain. It's just too thick. So I might have to might have to make a new might have to put a new chain on there. We got room for a fatter chain down there. And I found a couple collars that got set screws that I can put on there. So now I need to cut this shaft. So I have to measure and I'll cut this shaft and we'll go from there. All right, so I got my shaft in there and a couple collars mocked up for now. I'm gonna have to order the right sprocket so it'll accept this chain instead of messing around. So now I need to drive off of here. 
So I got a couple of ways I could do that. Um, I went out and found another engine I had out there that's got a three-quarter shaft on it. This is a, another Tecumish. It's off a snow thrower. Uh, I believe it's a 10 horse. It does have the wire on it for a headlight. Um, I could take off this 120 volt electric starter and I can put a 12 volt on there so I could start it electrically. That's why I like to use these Tecumishes because I could use electric start. So the engine's going to sit on here. Now I may have to make a plate or I may be able to just mount it right on here. And then there's a couple of ways I could drive it, I'm thinking. You know, I have to cut this lever off now. Get that out of the way. I can put a sprocket down here onto this shaft. And I can put a centrifugal clutch on there, a mini bike clutch. Or I can put a torque converter on there. I'm thinking a centrifugal clutch would probably work. Probably work even better. Instead of putting a torque converter on there and that, I'm sure it'll 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 pull it no problem. But that's where I'm at for now. So I'm gonna have to pull this off and uh, do something about this lever, get this kind of centered up, and then that way we can drive it. And then once we get it so we can drive it, then we need to make a handle back here to hold on to. Then we need to make a hitch, and then we need to make something to stand in. I do have the belly plate for this that goes underneath. Then I need to build something to come off the front. Tie this in. Something at an angle, maybe. Because if you're in the snow, you know, we don't have a lot of ground clearance here. So we're going to kind of want to glide over the snow and we're going to want to want these to kind of dig through the snow. So maybe come off, come off like a boat, like at an angle, come up and come in like this and like this, like a wedge. So as we hit the snow, or maybe even like a point, like a snow plow would be. So maybe as it's going through the snow, it'll kind of push the snow out of the way in front of you, under the tracks. But we'll see when we get to that point what we're gonna do. Maybe y'all out there got some suggestions. But that's how we're gonna drive it. I'll have to make some spacers and stuff. I'll get this, this pulley off so we can kind of center up the engine, see where we're at. clutch so we can see where everything lines up. I may have to come out even further but I already cut that shaft. I might have ruined it. That's alright. I might be able to find another one somewhere. That's what's nice about having the shop. I got all kinds of crap laying around. Plus we want weight over the tracks. Gotta have weight on the tracks. May even have to Put some more weight in here too once we get it done. But that's where we're at for now. Yeah, I'll probably have to weld a plate on here. So that way I can drill new mounting holes. But that's all a part of figuring stuff out. Yeah, I think a centrifugal clutch will work good. I have to get this 
fully off of there. Should, should be enough power to pull us. And we see if I can get this pulley off. Gotta get a good divot in there. moving. There's your dinner. See if I can find a centrifugal clutch around this place. Well, I need to order a clutch. I got tons of clutches around here, but none that got number 40 or 41 chain. They're all number 35, and I want to go with a heavier chain. I don't want to go with that little 35. And we may have to mess with the gearing too uh, once we get it going to see how fast it goes. It might go crazy fast. Uh, and then I need to get that other sprocket in there. I think I got another axle shaft from a lawn tractor that I could chop up again. If not, I'll have to order that. And then I'll start working on the handle while I'm waiting for those parts to come in. So we're at a standstill for now. I'll stand still. Well, we got our parts. They came pretty quick. And these are the parts that I ordered. I ordered a centrifugal clutch. We're going to try this first. And if it doesn't have enough power with this clutch, then I'll go to a torque converter. But I want to try this first. Cheaper option. I got our three-quarter split collars, locking collars. And I got the correct sprocket. So I didn't have to change the chain. And then I ordered these Nord Lock... NL18 washers. Now the reason I, I ordered these is because I need them as little spacers and I'll explain why. Whenever you have a bearing like this, you need a little spacer sometimes to go in between there because once you start sandwiching everything together, if you lock it onto the race here, it's gonna bind up the bearing. So you need a little spacer. They use these on mini bikes a lot. So I couldn't find the actual little spacers, so I found these, what are called Nordlock washers. They're a serrated like locking washer. They use them on Allen head bolts because you know they don't want it to stick out past the head of the Allen head bolt. So I got these. And I had this in stock. This is another spacer I'm going to use, which I get from Stens. It's for a Bobcat caster wheel because it's got that three-quarter bore because we want it to fit nice and snug on that three-quarter shaft. So I'm going to use one of these. And I ruined that first shaft I cut, which is an old axle shaft out of a transmission. So I had another axle shaft. These are axle shafts that I take out of those uh, tough torque transmissions when the axles snap off and I buy that axle uh, repair kit it comes with two new axles so I put the two new axles in and keep one of the old ones so this one's the right length I don't have to cut it off or anything so I already started to install it so I got the sprocket on there and then in between here I've got that that stems spacer I got the key got my keyway in there and another thing I did is I took a center punch 
and I kind of punched some divots in there to kind of help make these uh, bearings when I put these bearings in made them you know fit in the in the pockets a little tighter and then here's that Nord lock washer I'm gonna put one of them on this side so it doesn't bind up the axle and then I'll put this split collar over it and then on the outside here I don't know if the cameraman can see that he's gonna have to walk around this way come over here there's another one of those Nordlock washers and then I'll put another split collar on that side and then come over here even though this sprocket's got set screws on it I'm afraid that it might loosen up over time and start to walk so I'm gonna also put one of these split collars on there now I got all this stuff off of flea bay and it was less than $80 for everything. Here's another Nordlock washer. And then here's the sprocket that we're gonna go with for now. That's gonna go on here with the key. I'll get that lined up, there we go. And then I'll put another one of these collars on there. And then I'll lock this all down, get it all locked up. We'll flip it over, and then we'll see about mounting the engine. I got some stuff I need to show you on the engine. So of course, this engine been sitting a long time. So I rebuilt the carburetor already. So we'll get that ready to go. And then I gotta make a throttle. Cause we're gonna, I'm gonna use a thumb throttle. And I'm not gonna use a twist grip. Because i got to be able to steer it and throttle it. So I won't be able to steer it if I'm twisting the grip. So I'm going to put a thumb throttle on it. And I don't want to over rev this Tecumish engine. So I want to leave the governor hooked up to it. So I took off the throttle plate that goes on here. I took it off. And it had a lever on it if you remember, so you could throttle it up and down. So what I did is I flipped it over, I ground off the little uh, rivet on there, took it apart, and I took this little plate out. Because this little plate's got divots on it, so it would click in the different positions. It would click in the low idle, it click in the high. So I took this plate out, put it back together and then I just put a little tack weld to hold it because this is your governor spring right here the spring that's on here and then I drilled it out and put one of these cable snivvies in there and then I cut off it had another piece that come up over here I cut that off because I'm going to put a return spring on here so when I mount this on here, mount it back on there, I got a return spring. And then I put a cable clamp on there, so my cable's gonna come through. And then when I throttle it, see this moves real smooth. And then that return spring will push it back down. And then here's my governor spring. So I need to hook this all back up so that we got some kind of a throttle so when we go to drive it. So there's where we're at on that. Okay, so now I need something that it's gonna, you know, a little sulky for it to pull me on. So I went out in my scrap yard out here, my little junkyard, and I scrounged up some materials and this is what I found. So this is what I'm gonna sit on. And then I'll put my feet here and then this steel tubing, this one inch tubing I got here, that's going to be my handlebars. So I'm going to have handlebars here. And then of course I'll have to link this to the little uh, track assembly that we're working on. So what, my, what I'm going to do here is, 
This part, again, it's Craftsman, just like the snowblower. <laughs> and it's the same color. This was a base for one of those wheeled chipper shredder things that I scrapped. And I saved this part. This is where the engine went. And then it had wheels on it. Then I had me some two and a half by one and a half square tubing. So I'm going to make a little frame like this. I'm going to weld this together. And then I'm going to skin it on the bottom. I'm going to put a plate underneath here. Probably kick it up in the front. So that way if we're going through snow, it'll kind of push the snow away like a sled. And I'll have to put some runners underneath there. But then if I want to play with this thing, like in the dirt or on the ground, that's where the wheels come in. So I'll probably make it to where I can take the wheels off and then this thing will sit flat on the ground and be able to pull you like a sled. So I'll put a skin of some kind of metal underneath the bottom and then I'll skin the top. Uh-oh. Money's calling. So also out there in my scrapyard, I found some of this aluminum diamond plate. It's pretty thin. But I figured I could skin the top of it with this. That way I got a little grip shit. So I'll make my little platform. And I'll put this on the top. And then I got to make a hitch. So I got to be able to hitch it to it. So those are my ideas for my homemade snowblower snow dog. I don't think we should call it a snow dog. Maybe we should call it a snow puppy or something. Or a snow kitty. They might even already have stuff like that. I know they got a snow cat. Do they got a snow kitty? Maybe they do. I know the snow dog is made by brakes and scrap them. All right, I got it mocked up. I got the engine on there with just two bolts because I'm going to make a, a plate that's gonna fit on here with slots in it so in case the chain stretches I can adjust the chain. But I just got it mocked up for now. Plus the plate will be a little bit longer because I may have to put a battery on it if I decide to put electric start and lights and all that stuff. So the next thing is I need to make a handle. So we're gonna make a handle that's gonna come back here with a handlebar on it. So that's what that pipe's for. And then I've got just the makeshift throttle cable on there. So let's, as Oskin says, fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. Shut up! So let's fire it up and see what it'll do. Got plenty of torque. And then of course I may have to add weight to the front of it too. But that will all come to the future. I figured I might have to weight it down. But I could add weight when I put the front on it. But it works. So if I get a handlebar made, then we can test it a little more extensively. So let me start working on some handlebars. Well, my little test drive Broke the manifold, stupid me. Luckily, I've got more manifolds because I got a few of these engines, so I'll have to go rob one off. Well, I had another manifold out in the scrapyard. Good thing I hang on to that stuff, so you know where this is going. Yeah, with the Nikki Sixes in the scrap barrel. There's my handle, made out of that one inch tubing. I wanted 7 8 but they didn't have 7 8 where I buy my steel. So 1 inch will good. I can put 1 inch grips. There's my clutches for the tracks so I could steer it if we need to. Hooked up a kill button. Got to have a kill button in case this thing gets away from me. And I hooked up this throttle. I had a throttle. Well, this ain't a throttle, but I had this lever. I don't know if I'm going to use this, but... Uh, I'll just use it for now. I don't think it's giving it enough throw on a throttle. So let's uh, fire it up again and see.
see what happens now. And I, I rotated the recoil too. Because this was sticking out this way. So now I got it here by, by the operator. I gotta have it hooked to the machine. And I'll have to have it way down the front. I wanna make the handle adjustable so I can raise it up or down. There's a lot of little things I need to do yet. Well, let's take it outside. We got some snow. Take it outside, I'll just run behind it. But it's not it's not revving up the RPM, so it'll probably go a lot faster. And I may have to change the gearing. May have to mess with that gear. Because I want it to go a little faster. But I need to get more throttle out of it. Probably be able to steer it just by doing this, but those clutches would come in handy in tight spots. So yeah, we got a lot more, a lot more to do on this. We got a long way to go. This may be a three or four parter. I know what you're gonna say in the comments. I could already hear you all saying this. You need to have the drive wheels in the front. If you drive in the front, it wouldn't wheelie and you wouldn't have to put all that weights in there. Yeah, I kind of know that because it drives from these back cogs. So if I was to reverse everything to where the handle would be back here, that way when you go to take off, your power is in the front, so it would want to pull itself down. It wouldn't do that, you know, wanting the wheelies where I had to put weight in the front. I thought about that, but because I've got these clutches to steer it with, that would be difficult to do, but if you're thinking about building one of these from a snow blower, that's what you're going to want to keep in mind. Because not all these snow blowers with the tracks have these, these clutches on it so you can steer it. So if you're going to build one of these, you would want to take everything and flip it around the other way. You could take the tracks off and spin them around, you know, because they got a direction on them for digging and then have your handle and everything back here this way. I do have another one of these snow blowers with the tracks, but it's a little five horse one and the tracks are, you know, they're real, they're real thin and they're a lot smaller. I went with this one because it was bigger and beefier. And it would be too difficult because I don't have these cables for these drives. Those are, I would have to have cables made up I could flip everything around and have it reverse so that this would be the front and this would be the back. But for what I'm using it for, it should be all right. If I just add some weight to the front, it'll hold it down. We'll see how it works. I could always take it all apart and flip it around. So me and Mr. Cameraman were just brainstorming here. And you know what? I'm gonna flip everything around. I'm gonna make it so it drives off the front. I think I can make longer cables. I got an idea. 
So I'm gonna take this all back apart, which I was gonna take apart anyway, cause I gotta put a plate on here. So that's, that's why you gotta mock things up and, and experiment. So I'm gonna spin everything around. The handle's good. I'm gonna take the handle off, put it back here. Spin the motor around. That shaft is easy. So I gotta take that shaft all out, spin that around, put the sprocket on that side. Take the tracks off, reverse them so that they're digging that way. And yeah, I got a solution. I think I can make longer cables and come off the back here and then it'll dig in the front. Like a snowmobile. That's how a snowmobile drives. It drives off the front. Cogs. It doesn't drive from the back. That's why you gotta, gotta use your kidneys up here. Another thing before I forget is it's probably gonna need brakes too. I'm gonna have to rig up some kind of brakes because if you're going up and down hills on it, you may have to stop. So, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Terrell fixes all. I'm Terrell building stuff out of junk that I got laying around my shop. Follow me with your junk on Facebook and Instagram. Go to our web store, check out what we got there. Follow the link, there's a link that'll take you to our store. We got all kinds of stuff for sale. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! Working on a homemade snow pup or whatever you wanna call it. Big Toro had a snowblower called Snow Pup. We call it the Snow Kitty, because I like cats. Meow, meow. My brother's like a cat, he's feral. Scratch me once. I got cat scratch fever. I think I still got it. I'm sweating right now.